Well, hello everybody, well, this is my first video, David Gillam's on the camera and I'm uh, going to chat to you a little bit. As you can see I'm just growing bicolours this year because I really love them, oh, that's not really true. You'll see in a little while, these are Carmen's two beds, this is called Hillcrest Jonathan, uh, it's a multicolour bloom and she likes these sort of colours, it's a small deck. Uh, raised by Les Jackson and uh, that's the first variety. It's in Carmen's two beds and that's her first bed. This was raised by uh, George Harding in Tasmania many years ago. It's called Formby Art. It's Carmen's second variety and it's a small deck again. It's in pink and white as you can see and it's a great cut flower. She grows them for cut flower and um, it's a really nice variety. Good strong stems and that's important when you have a cut flower, so that's at her second variety. This is my old favourite as a palm, it's called Gertner Twilight. It seems to do well around our area, David grows it well and I grow it well, and um, it's the most consistent, comes to size easily. Um, I showed a vase at, uh, at Kent, uh, Essex on Sunday and got 23 points for, for it, best vase in show, so it is really a good variety for us. Uh, that's Gert the Twilight. How many plants you got there? 41 plants, David. 41 plants. Usually grow, that's what this bed holds. People say to me, you've got odd numbers, but it's just whatever fits in a bed, and I try and grow a bed of each one. And you set the calyxes off them all. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, do that bit, do that. You still, yeah, he's still filming. So there's a lot of work. They say poms are easy, but when you look at my poms, uh, everyone is disbudded. Um, everyone is decalex down to about that sort of size. Spent an hour this morning early, six o'clock, going through them yet again. And um, yeah, they're not easy. To grow poms at a reasonable level is a lot of effort. Well, easy early on, but a lot of effort this time of year. This is the second pom. I haven't grown it for a few years and I didn't realise, I forgot how awkward it is in colours. It's like a blooming rainbow. And um, they were a bit big early on because I disbudded uh, too much. Uh, two pairs down. It needs one pair on my ground, just one pair of buds down. And I go through every day, spend about an hour on the poms. Um, uh, this is Ivers Rhonda. Um, and it's going to be my second variety hopefully this year for the Arthur Griffiths if I can get it good but it'll take a lot of matching up whereas the girt the matches quite well this one is quite difficult there's all sorts of shades of colour through there so you know you've got to really um, match them up well and not disbud it too heavy because it goes oversized very easily yeah, there was 27 of the uh, Ivers Rondas, 27 plants, 41 of the uh, Gertner Twilight, and this is my biggest plant, which is Dave's choice. As you can see, I've got two beds of it, 64 plants, and you might say, why do you need that number? Well, with Dave's choice, the centre comes and goes so quickly. From, from that sort of centre to that sort of centre, you've only got a day. Uh, and, and then in, uh, at the end of the second day, it will be blowing. So if you can cut a big flush like I will for Kent and Essex, which are my next two shows, then I should have match vases for both. I grow it eight up. I put potash into it, dry potash, at the end of July and you get a stem like that. I've seen people with their blooms keeling over and that sort of thing. But it, and the other thing I do is grow it in the same spot every year. So you get a build up of potash in that area. And I think that's the reason I keep a reasonable stem on them. Don't have problems of keeling over. Uh, other than that I treat it as a normal daily. Up, eight up, strip it right down so it's a medium and uh, get the size, full size. And so what's the two beds total? 64. This is my backup medium semi-cactus. I only grow the two for championships. The number one is Eastwood Moonlight, the number two is Clay's Candy, this is Clay's Candy. But I grow it just seven blooms on a plant. Uh, two weeks ago I had eight and then I stripped the uh, eighth one out as they colour up. And uh, quite a nice flower and plenty of depth, this is a good bloom, uh, good centre, good depth, consistent colouring and uh, raised by Clayton Bill down in the New Forest and uh, it's a really good variety, I like it, Clayton's skin. Plenty out there as well now aren't there? Uh, yeah, good flush now, you get the odd one that wants to go back to mum 
uh, which is Hillcrest County, raised by Les Jackson, that's the original in that pink, and it's trying to spot that. But I've got a good flash on it. Everything here is geared for the one show, well not the one show, but I, I'm organised in as much, I don't let anything flower. If you've been on this plot a week today, you wouldn't have seen an open bloom. It's hard to believe, but it's true. And then I had my first blooms out for our six last Sunday, which were all a bit young, I have to say. But I'm in a belt with a flash coming from the This is uh, Mary's Jumanda, which is the old faithful nowadays in the uh, miniature ball. And um, I grow it 14 up, 14 blooms on the plant. I leave a bit of rough down the bottom if they throw it. Um, I'm not strict on numbers on this because you could get easily get it as a small ball and I don't really want it as a small ball, I want it as a, a, a decent miniature ball but when you look at it at the angles it goes right back on the stem, good size, good centre and uh, uh, like all of the ones you've seen so far I've got plenty for this weekend, plenty for the national and plenty afterwards. It goes on forever and when you're going back to teeny buds which will be Harrogate or after um, Sussex show, Surrey show, never ended. There's, uh, there were 31 of the Clates candy but I had to pull 5 out with virus but there's 27, uh, 26, 27 left in the Clates candy and all the Marys are there, uh, 35 plants. I only grow 21 varieties, I've got 900 plants, 50 for Carmen, 94 for the new varieties um, and 750 roughly for me and I only grow 21 varieties in decent numbers of each. This one is 35, near as you uh, This is the Eastwood Moonlight. We've got a whole bed of 44 Eastwood Moonlight. But what I have done is tucked a couple of white moonlight in the middle. I bought a pot tube of David Hall and I just wanted to see the comparison. I'm quite pleased with the white moonlight because he, he said to me when I bought it, you know, you're brave because no one grows it anymore. But I thought I'd have a look and it's six up on the white moonlight and six up on the eastward moonlight and they're not bad so I might have a little try with the white moonlight again next year. But very pleased with the uh, eastward if you look at that bloom that's what you're sort of looking for. Six blooms on a plant and all of my plants it isn't coincidence that they all come out together like this it is an organised approach to it. I work on the plants, uh, I work on the buds and I try to achieve what I've got today which is virtually every variety together, blooming to together. And where I wasn't well earlier in the year, as many of you will know, uh, when I came out of hospital, uh, the lads have put me straw down, they put me canes in, but it was left to Carmen to actually cut the plants down, which I always do. I stop them at planting and then I crush them right down in June, late June and uh, she was crashing them down and I was sitting in a little fishing chair shouting at her and uh, <laughs> you know, what to do uh, and you're still married they never bloom, they never bloom, cutting them down like just do it and um, we got there in the end and this is the results of her labour and my um, <laughs> this is what I consider to be the best giant deck or large deck around at the present time it was raised in America by Gordon LaRue and it's called Canora Valentine or they call it Wildfire or Fire or Valentine UK I just used the old name that I know it as which is Valentine and um, I've got a bed of it, I've got uh, 40 plants of it I've got about 44 of these with Moonlight and uh, about 40 of the uh, Valentine they grow 3 up, I tried it at 2 up it was no bigger last year at 2 up than it is at uh, three up and I lost 40 blooms there because of it. So last year I had 80 blooms, this year I've got 120 blooms so um, there's no difference in size. I, I showed six at Essex last Sunday and they were all giants and it won the giant class. And a little trick you need to do with Valentine is as it sort of develops you get these odd streaky petals like that but it's better to put, pull them out early and let it redevelop rather than do it on the day of the flower show. So you just pull it as low as you can, get it out. You can't do too many of them, but the ones that are really um, showing up as a different colour, like this bloom here has got a couple with a real stripe down them like that. It's better to take them out early and it will cover its own uh, problem. This one is particularly got the measles, so I'm going to have a go at it. 
Um, there'll, yeah, be a couple, right, so. there'll, be a, there'll be a couple of petals left in, in the end, I assure you, but you'll be surprised how you don't notice it in the end. The only danger is if you pull them all out in the one place, of course you've got a hole. But uh, you can see there's quite a flush there, I'm going to have it for the next few shows. And there's a fully developed bloom, just to give you uh, an idea of the impact and size of Valentine. And uh, I came them, that's a little, little trick I should mention, but I go round when they're partially open like this bloom, and I cane every bloom, they do tend to keel over. It's not the strongest uh, stem in the world, and when you transport them, you want to take care. Put them in a safe place in your van or your car, and put them in a long bucket cane, because uh, you'll lose blooms unless you're careful. Sorry, I'm doing work while I'm, I'm, I'm chatting, but um, uh, I do it on Gillam's plot when I'm there. I end up just budding all this stuff for him. No I pain, done it just because you. I love him. <laughs> this is Marston Karen. Uh, I've grown it for three years now, and it's a reliable miniature deck. You've got to grow it well. You've got to grow it eight up to get uh, full size. And it has a tendency, as Frankie Fraser found out last year, if you're travelling it a long way, that it will shatter at the back. And I try and uh, show it at this sort of stage, before it gets really old, because there is a sort of time frame where it will fall to bits unless you're careful. The flush isn't as together as I would like it, but um, I am going to have blooms for a month on this one, because it just keeps going forever. Um, I showed it at the Thames Valley Late Show last year, well into late September, and got best bars in show with it. So it is good right the way through. But uh, it's one of my favourites in the miniature decks, and it's called Marston Karen, uh, raised by John Digweed, and it's uh, uh, an orange miniature deck. Not classified, so it can be, and I have done. Showed it as a ball daily as well because it's one of them you could argue that the form is deck or the form is ball. But if I was classifying it, I would classify it as a deck. Oakwood Goldcrest, it's the only small cactus that I've got in, small semi cactus that I've got in this year. It's a sport of Cherwell Goldcrest and uh, it does well down south. It's a, a really good variety. We can't grow, I can't grow a kiwi to save me life. So I've got to take those Kiwi boys on with something and this is the only thing that I can sort of compete with them with. Um, I've got 54 plants here, they've grown uh, 8 up, 7 up, 7 up and um, it does well. I grow them all under cover because I think it improves all these varieties by covering them and also it works more as an insurance policy that if you get a storm comes through it ensures that you're at the flower show and he's not so that's the reason I cover really. And I don't want to do all this work uh, to be wiped out by a storm it's a lot of effort as I said I've got 900 plants and I live with them I don't do anything else I grow dangerous and that's it. And these have been undercover from day one, haven't they, these they two? They have. They had daffodil pots under them. Both these two beds had daffodil pots under them uh, right up until the end of the daffodil season. And I took the pots away, dug the plot over, prepared it, left the covers up, and both these two varieties have spent their life undercover. And that's why I've got such a decent height on a short squat variety like Oakwood and near four foot high. So it's done with a reason. But you wouldn't want to grow windhold dying that way because it'd be through your guns. So both these two are little grunty varieties, short varieties, that are drawn up and that's a really that's a little of uh Marston Karen. So Marston Karen is grown eight up, hopefully uh gold breast uh, seven up, and uh once again the flush is uh, we're right into the flush of uh, Oakwood Goldcrest and uh, they're four foot high and I'm quite pleased with them. This is my uh, bed of uh, Barbary deer moor. Uh, there's uh, 42 plants here. They're a wee bit later than I'd like but they can't miss uh, the National and probably the Kent Show uh, which is this weekend. So I'm going to have a big hit. Um, but I'm not all that happy with all the plants. Some are lovely plants, like this is a lovely plant this is a lovely plant and so on, it's probably half and half and then you get half the plants that have got this sort of mottling, a type of virus I suppose in it which I shall weed out, you know, you don't want plants I don't mind because I may well show them and I just cut the foliage off and put a bit of foliage in of the clean ones 
but I would never propagate from a plant that's like that. Uh, I've already marked them, my little system of marking, you probably can't see the canes because they're short canes. But I put a twist tie on one of the two front canes, if it's a keeper, this one, and if it's a, a chucker, it, uh, there's a twist tie on the back cane. So when I, you ha a, fro a frost hits the plot, then I know what to keep and I know what to chuck, because when a frost comes you don't know what's what. We're going straight on to the Challenger. They're eight up by the way, it's not a big miniature. I've grown it for two years, it's been my third year with Diamore and it's a really good flower. I haven't got any full flowers out yet, but they're on their way. Uh, bed of Challenger, <coughs> 56 Kenora Challenger, which is my main large, and uh, pleased with them. I uh, thought I'd have some for last weekend and uh, I was hoping to go to the Midlands if I had some Challenger and one or two other things but I only had half open blooms really for last weekend uh, and the flush is sort of cracked in now. 56 plants, 28 of them have grown 4 blooms on a plant and the other 28 plants have grown 5 blooms on a plant just to see if I could get a bit more refinement and not lose too much size. Uh, so there's a lot to come on a bloom like that that's a quarter open and I think there won't be much in it but that is a show bloom if you're trying to remember what they should be like it, it should be one with a centre like that and reasonable depth two thirds depth uh, to the breadth so if we've got me large ring I always keep sorry Dave, <coughs> I always keep rings uh, around each row I haven't done this before, uh, to, on other varieties but I always keep a ring nearby and that to me would be an ideal size by tomorrow I would cut it and that would be right on the ring by showtime so I always keep rings around just to see if I'm growing them well or poorly. This is uh, Winholm Diane, it's my main small deck uh, I grow them uh, seven blooms on the plant and it always does well here so I will continue to grow that. grows tall won't be long before they're touching the top of the covers and that's a bit of a problem but I do grow dahlias taller than most but there's a good flush I had some young blooms for Kent uh, for Essex last Sunday but there'll be a big flush coming through now and uh, going to hit the national just as I want it I'll have a lot of stuff the thing is have I got the energy and the health to stay up all night like I normally do <laughs> and battle away at them my man is growing dahlias this year so I won't get that assistance. How dare he! <laughs> you can help me instead. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I don't know how often stays two blooms though. <laughs> uh, we did? No. Nope. This is the cream spalt uh, of Winholm and uh, people have been asked to me, is it distinct? Uh, it's hard to get a bloom to compare but take my word for it, we're looking at both beds now and uh, there is a, you can use them as two clear distinct varieties and that is the worry when people say they've got a spot so I've got uh, 45 uh, plants of uh, Winholm in the first bed and two rows uh, which is 28 plants uh, of cream in this bed and then this row here are all large semi cactus that are geared for the Silver Hill Shield I did the same last year and used a, a vase of Challenger with three blooms from a row but I'm going to be a bit tight this year because you want them about a quarter open uh, now to hit next Tuesday and I think I'll just blow that I think um, uh, this is Sundance, uh, Clearview Sundance then you've got Naris Trisha then you've got Clearview uh, Louise, then you've got uh, Clearview Edie, and then you've got Trooper Dan. And I need three blooms of three different varieties, one, one bloom of each, uh, to complete my uh, Silver Hill Shield. I don't think I'll quite make it. Might make the Louise, but uh, I think I've blown it. This is a mixed bed, which originally was 31 uh, Rycroft Zoe. Um, not Rycroft Zoe, Greenway Zoe, the sport of uh, Rycroft Zoe and they started to break down, I had nine, there's none in here anymore but I had nine that broke down so I decided that I'd put extra plants rather than put another variety in there, I put extra plants of varieties that are already over there, my miniatures mainly and my Westerton Harry so I've got Westerton Harry mixed, I've got some Colvent and Cristobal mixed uh, some uh, Rycroft Jam mixed, some Barbary de uh, uh, Delegate, some uh, A1, Rycroft A1, which is now called Rycroft Misty, 
and um, they're the varieties that I've filled in with and it's given me extra numbers on stuff I've got a lot of and that's Phil, uh, Phil Godsmart new one it's um, a miniature deck uh, it came to me as A1 last year and I liked it and uh, it, it's uh, white with a lavender flush not massive I only grow about eight blooms if you, you, you count the plants there's about seven or eight blooms on every plant uh, whereas pole vent crystal if you grow it is a sizable flower and uh, you're talking about 14 on there to keep it within the ring size this is the full bed of uh, Westerton Harry and it's a good workmanlike flower uh, from Gordon Hodgson up in the northeast and uh, it's not a big variety, I grow it five up but I had them near the ring uh, last Sunday so five up is about right for me got good form, grown in the open, takes all the weather it's a good workmanlike medium decorative five blooms on a plant and um, it's the one I'll grow in the next few years I think as my one and only medium deck we go on to Rycroft Marksman which is a new one from Phil Godsmark it's, uh, it's not on the market yet uh, but I've grown it for three or four years it's a white miniature ball with a slight lavender flush and there's a full bed of it as Dave pans down it grows a bit tall and when the lads put the canes in they put three foot canes around it they didn't know the dahlia uh, like I, I knew it so I, I came back home and we stuck some four, five foot canes around it which it needs and I try to do that if it's a low growing variety I use shorter canes if it's a medium sized variety uh, height wise I'm talking about I'll use four foot canes and if it's a five foot uh, six foot variety I'll use these longer canes like we've got here this is my bed of uh, Jumanda um, we've got 31 plants in all of these three beds we just seen because that's what it takes so I put whatever it takes and uh, this is Jumanda uh, came from Holland, Geerlin, some years ago. We've got the pink sport now, and um, it does well here. I've got 14 up. I leave a bit of rough on it to keep the size as a miniature. I don't show it as a small ball. I want a small ball this year, uh, so I'm pleased with those. Big flushes on all of these three. Um, can't miss anything really. Shouldn't be able to. They're all going to be rubbish, but can't miss. <laughs> it's got. A flush on the back of the petal this isn't it as well yes it has uh, it's uh, it's constant uh, throughout it's um, I'll give you a bloom because you haven't seen one yet because you saw mine on Sunday which were young years but if you come through here that's near enough what you want to be showing but I didn't did I if no, you think back to Sunday they were lumpy yeah. because they were young but I'm only just about getting it uh, to, to pick up for uh, potential but look mm. at the depth of that and look at the form of that and that is a class act yeah but uh, on Sunday it was more if you remember slightly young wasn't yeah, it yeah more that quite. sort of centre wouldn't it a lumpy yeah. uh, I think you've got to hang on to it and uh, show it at that That's but nice. I didn't yeah it is nice uh, but I've got a lot, a lot of nice blooms coming and maybe we can get a vase for him for the seedling class because he's entered it you might not have it yourself through God's mark uh, but again it's not massive it's grown uh, eight up and um, doesn't need covering like most of these miniatures quite pleased with it for a new variety so this is going to be misty misty uh, like yeah came, misty. As, came as a1 for three uh, for two years I've had it as a1 and uh, he's given it a name now I kept chasing him because <laughs> I don't like showing Daniels and just numbers so he's come up with the name Rycroft Misty and uh, it's potentially a nice one this, this is uh, one that I've always done well with uh, but not last year this is called Polvent and Cristobal and uh, I had a terrific year with it in 2015 but last year I have to say the plants didn't look right the blooms weren't right it wasn't only me it was everyone else and I don't know why I've cut down the numbers because I didn't want a disaster area I had 45 plants last year and the same the year before but I've just got a row and those seven plants so I've got 23 and I've held it back to try and flower it for the national I want a vase for the national I, I hope I'll make it but it'll be touch and go uh, you need uh, down south you would need colour uh, now and perhaps thinking about flicking blues now so unless it warms up and it's freezing today it's a miserable day today 
We're not the only ones up north that get bad weather. We've had rain, uh, uh, thunderstorms, we've had a torrential uh, hurricane go through. Not really. No, <laughs> we don't get what you get, but it's been a bad day for us today. And uh, we go straight on then. We go straight on to Rycroft Jan. If you get down, you might see a blue. Mm -hmm. You need a decent blue. I saw a, a small one. Um, It's quite nice. Look at this. It's a young one that, that here. Would be near enough what you'd be looking at. That sort of bloom with a smaller centre. You don't want a lumpy centre like that. That's too. You haven't got the weight of bloom when you try and show a bloom with a big heavy centre. You want it with depth like they've got, and the centre just about there like those. But the judge would want to walk in in a minute. You wouldn't want to be staging that or cutting that. Uh, you want the judge to come and look at that, and that would be ideal. They've grown nine up, and um, again, I should have some. You still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Died, <isn't> it? <laughs> Get the sprays out again. Uh, this is uh, Barbary Primrose Hall from Barry Davis. I, I really like this. It's the first time I've grown it. Um, that's a good bloom. I've got the flush coming out if you pan down, Dave. Uh, I've only got the one row of it, I've got 16 plants of it, but uh, I'll hit it, I'll hit those 16 plants for when I want it, and it won't be their fault if I don't get a vase to the National, I should find a vase of this lot, and, um, but I haven't cut a bloom yet, um, so we're looking forward to some uh, for the weekend. And that's delicate behind, is it? Uh, that's delicate behind, um, don't like the variety I must say, it's not my cup of tea at all. Uh, the other barberries that I've grown have done really well and I'm pleased with them. But this is a difficult dahlia. It's got a very thick stem. It wants to throw... Uh, I like a, I'm a control freak and I like to control them. And this is very difficult to get your flush together. And I noticed when Barry panned out around his plot, he had Barbary Star that was in a, a full beautiful flush of white miniature bald dahlias. And he had this one, like mine odd blooms here and there and it is not an easy dahlia to grow and uh, it, it might have seen its days on this block I like them to, that I can handle them it's got to go some for some and of these centres are not great it's, it's yeah. you know it's not the best he's ever raised uh, but this may be this uh, this I like a lot you know, this is a good variety I think we were a little bit doubtful about it would do down south but I don't think we need to be worried I think it's going to suit mm. us alright we're on the new variety beds. I've got uh, 94 plants in here. I grow it as a trial for the NDS and the American Dahlia uh, Group, which is Dahlias of Today. I do an article and have done for 40 years for them. And try and give talks on new varieties if I'm asked. And uh, I only grow two plants, perhaps three plants of everything. So there'd be about 40, 45 varieties in here perhaps. And um, some are good, some are not so good, some are atrocious. But um, you don't know when you get them, they're all the apple of the eye of the razor and you respect that and I do my best to grow them pretty well. Uh, they're tired and they're sprayed and they're fed and they're disbudded like any other dahlia I've got so there's no excuse if the dahlia doesn't do any good it isn't because I haven't looked after it. And a lot of them are on number so you can't write names down. This comes from Phil Godsmark, it's a Rycroft Dahlia, comes on a number F5, F for Freddy 5. Grew it last year, it was a bit short, he had different stock, and he said, oh, I'll sort you out some of the tall stock. So he's chucked all the short stock away, and now we've got this beautiful four foot stock. They're grown about eight up, I think you'll find three, six, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight up, seven up and um, that's a success, that's doing well. This is one from uh, John Willett, it hasn't done very well, it's grown very low. I've had a lot of clock face blooms, it's a fim, medium fim as you can see. Um, it's okay, that's a not bad bloom, but I don't think it uh, would make the grade. Uh, but it, it, it's a fim, a uh, red fim uh, from John Willett, he calls them Normandy, so this is called Normandy Hope. Uh, uh, and on the on the label it's got N Hope, I might change it to 
No, no hope. hope. <laughs> um, but uh, no, John, I'm only joking. It's got a ni nice bit of fimming on the. On, it's not too not uh, split. split. Yeah, but, but if it's going to be a medium. Needs you know, a bit I've more. I've grown a Oops. mess on it. I've grown three, four, five, six, seven up. So mm. um, well, that one is much better, which you're going to see in a minute. So I think that's a nice bit. Okay. This one is called Gavin's Choice. It was sent to me by Gavin uh, Carter up in the, the, and I saw it in the Birmingham exhibit at uh, the National last year and liked it. Two plants I've got. This is the other plant. And uh, needs growing well. It's not a massive one if you compared it to a Diane. Probably a six up job. I've had a bl two blooms off of that plant, I think, for last week. And they were good. Um, and again, it's about, probably grew it six or seven up. But probably I'd grow it five up if I was really going to try with it. I'd grow it five up. It's um, it's a red small deck um, from the Midlands. Doing a little controlled uh, experiment here. I've got two plants of lemon crest, which is this plant and this plant, and two plants of Lismore gold crest. Uh, this is from Bill Franklin. He gave me some plants to try. And there is a difference. David here picked up on one of them, which is the stems of the Lismore Goldcrest is darker, the leaf is slightly darker, and on the lemon crest it's a, a, a paler stem and uh, a more greener leaf. And then you compare the colours of the two, like that, and there is two colours. They are two varieties. So you've got oak wood, you've got lemon crest, and you've got Lismore Goldcrest. And um, whether judges would expect accept that, I would. As two, would you? Yeah, well, two. one's a solid yellow, and the other's got a, a lighter yellow and a little blush yeah. in the centre. Yeah, isn't it? more primrose, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm happy with that. But are the same size as oak wood? Slightly smaller. I would say both of them. I grow oak wood seven. I would say I would grow six, five to six. Uh, to get the size. Mm. You know, it's not a bad size, grown uh, six up, nice form isn't it? Yeah. That's the lemon crest and I haven't really got much out of this, that's the earliest bloom and um, again nice form. So I might have a little try with one of them uh, and see because what you've got is n you haven't got the problem of matching that you would have with oak wood. Yeah. They are a solid yellow aren't they? This is uh, the best one from John Willett. It's a lovely film called Delight, Normandy Delight. J uh, John lived in a village called Menil Humber uh, in Normandy for many years and all of his dailies have the prefix uh, Normandy and this one is Normandy Delight. I had a bloom last weekend so it's two, four, five, six. I grew it seven up and uh, good form for a film. Loads of depth as you can see. Terrific yeah. depth in it. It's a nice solid flower for a thin Yeah, so really a good. Nice, nice even uh, petalling on it. Yeah, that's got a future, that one. I always pick out petals. Sorry, I, it doesn't matter for the camera, but it matters to me <laughs> to get a petal out yeah. like that. This is a collarette. This is called Melanie Louise, raised by Brian Madders in the New Forest. And it's a really good... I can't say it. It's a really good thin, a uh, really good collarette and um, gives you an idea of it and I saw it at the National last year in a single vase class or single bloom class wrote its name down a friend of mine was scrounging off Brian Maddis and, uh, and I was doing the propagating from my friend John Carter and I ended up with the two spare plants over I've uh, given to John so I like that I like that as a colorette that's really good in a section where we need a bit of um, a bit of quality this is the tallest thing on the pot, <coughs> but it's a lovely flower. This is a lo this is under that's cracked open since I was down here earlier, so I'll pick it up for you. Not break it, yeah. But it's so tall, it's eight foot tall, and it's a reason I would never grow it again. I just couldn't handle a daily like that. But you look at the actual flower, it's an absolute beauty. It's uh, from Cyril Watkins down in Cornwall. It's a miniature deck, it's called R1, R for Roger, R1, and it's a beaut. And if, you, if that was a four foot plant, you wouldn't stop me growing that. But do I want something that high? <laughs> Absolutely not. Look at it, over here. 
back in blooms. Again, every bloom has been like that. I showed two last Sunday, and it's a real knockout. But have to grow it in a trench. Yeah. <laughs> or get a ladder. <laughs> This is uh, James, this is Kilncroft James from John Carter in Oxford in Kent and uh, it's one of his new uh, collarettes. I would say the judges would probably fault it for being a bit gappy. Um, I don't know if it, on, on judging my first two blooms, first three blooms, I don't think it has set the world on fire. They're looking for overlapping petals really on a, on a collarette like that and um, it's a miss. This is uh, Grace Wood from Derek Cave. It was sent as a small cactus, would you believe? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to get size um, on a camera, but believe me, it's about a six, seven inch bloom, seven inch bloom, I suppose, seven and a half. And um, it's a heavy form, but it's a beautiful fuchsia pink colour. Uh, that is Grace Wood from Derek Cave, a great grower, stems like iron. I think because it was a, a, a small, I said to be a small semi cactus. I've grown it about eight up. I've had one off there. There's uh, a three there, four, five, six, seven, eight. About nine up, I grew it uh, as a small cactus. But uh, a small <laughs> cactus, <laughs> it ain't. These are all uh, Phil Godsmarks. Uh, you feel no. These are all Phil Godsmarks varieties. They're all in a number. Haven't bloomed yet. They'll be blooming over the next weeks. This one is uh, from John Willett. It's a small cactus, white. Uh, and more of a semi, isn't it? Yeah, more of yeah. a semi. Yeah. It's um, as I say. These are all Phil Godsmarks going up to this one, um, and they're all on numbers. Uh, H6, G3, H11. One plant of each. And um, we wait to see what they're like. It's hard to tell it's got at a the nice moment. Nice colour, isn't it? Vibrant. Lovely, lovely, vibrant colour. Yep. Now this, uh, believe it or not, was uh, sent to me as a miniature deck. <laughs> it was called Happy Idea, uh, Happy uh, Diane, Happy Diane, and um, I think it's a massive, great. Uh, so I grew, what I did is, because it looked like Diane, I thought I'd grow one plant six up, which this is six up, and then I grew one twelve up, which is this one, just in case it was a miniature, just in case it was a small. But the plant that has produced uh, the twelve up, look at that for a Diane, really. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous and more refined than the blooms that were grown six up. It's gone a bit heavy way bit chunky but because it's been grown more blooms on a plant really refined happy diane from peter hasselhofer in australia uh, in austria that's the uh, r1 he's still going r1 again um but it's a beaut i love that don't love the height much um this is one i thought i've grown this variety before but i don't think i have uh, les stothard had a variety called blight and stella which I grew some years ago, and this is called Blight and Stella, but it's not the same Blight and, Blight and Stella. This is a miniature, the other one was a small deck, and it's got potential. Early days, first blooms again, a uh, little bit to come in the middle, probably grown it about eight or nine up, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten up, so it'll be uh, a decent miniature. It's a bit almost like Barbary Surprise colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's called Blight and Stella. Uh, this is uh, Colston Susan, um, which is a bit chunky, another small cactus sent to me, but obviously not a small cactus, a small medium, and um, a bit chunky for what people are looking for today, but would be great in bunches, would be great in the garden, won't blow over in a, uh, in a hurry, and uh, really attractive. This is, comes from Derek Cave, uh, it's called Colston Susan. That's down that bed. Uh, I'll go down this bed. This one is called Kilncroft. Um, uh, Kilncroft. What's it called? Kilncroft Jenny from John Carter. It's a collarette, and um, it's okay. It's not going to set the world on fire. Uh, this is called Glenmark Philly Liz. It's from uh, George Harding in Tasmania. Got to pick these petals out. They bug me. 
um, and um, it's a large fin. I haven't grown one of them in my life before, but a lot of guts, pretty good form, isn't it? Really, yeah. lovely colour, uh, white overlaid with bright pink. Um, not a bad stem for a bloom that size, and um, quite nice. Probably a few more up. It'd kick it through the medium, wouldn't it? It might. It might. It was sent as a large fin, so I grew it quite a limited number on on the plant. Probably four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four up of a large, and I hadn't grown it before, I'd always grown four, same as I'd grow a miniature, perhaps about ten, but you don't know, the raisins tend not to tell you how to grow them, they just say, there you are, grow that, and uh, you do the best you can. Uh, this is my spot of uh, White Diane, uh, I haven't quite got the finished article yet, because it's throwing a bit of yellow in every bloom. Um, but it's potentially a, a really good dahlia if you could get it all white with just its lavender mm. flush. But I haven't managed to get it one of these days. This is a second year. It was a first year uh, spotted plant last year. But I'm looking all the time for one bloom that is all white. And then we'll take some shoots off it and we'll have a white dye in, which will be exciting. But at the moment, there's too much yellow in it to make it. So it's got a nice flush, the flush from Winholm has come out. Yeah, on the beautiful, beautiful. If it didn't have that yellow in it, it would be mm. something special. I try and do both sides of this bed to save going down the other side. Uh, this is one, it reminds me of one I grew called Cherwell Skylife mm. uh, a few years yeah. ago from June Davis. This comes from uh, John Willett. And um, yeah, it's the first bloom I've had out, so he looks quite nice. It's another one that go well with Volvo, would not it, for yeah. height? Yeah, yeah, another <laughs> tall one. Mind you, you shouldn't be put off too much with my height, because as David would tell you, I grow it taller than tall plants, uh, taller than most. Um, these are different ones that are coming out. This is one I grew last year, and I couldn't get the centre in it right. It's called Pixie. Barbary Pixie, I've grown quite a lot on the plant now and uh, I, I won't blame myself, it'll be the variety if I can't get a centre on it it's because I've got two, five, six, seven, eight. I've got it eight up and if you can't get a decent centre on eight up then you never will. Um, last year I only had four breaks come up and I blame myself really for a lumpy middle on it but I think this year uh, I'm expecting it to be uh, better uh, and that is called Barbary Pixie from Barry Davis nice habit, I will say about Barry's varieties most of them have got a real good growing habit or well, here they have so I can only judge it on that and this one is one that has been posted a lot on Facebook that you would have heard of, it's Jojo, Rossendale Jojo from Don Kershaw and it will be a rival to the Diane's, it's a yellow small deck, grows about four, four and a half foot tall and um, do you want to have a bit yeah, but it's quite quite good, it, it's uh, an interesting small deck, loads of depth, uh, fair stems, you know, um, so quite good, quite like it, we ought to do the ones at the back, to suit the up the top, this one, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's a bit Thin. It's just gone over its centre there, but I showed the vase of this uh, Essex on Sunday and, and won with it and got 22 points for the vase, which is a good mark in a cup class. But you've got to catch the centre just right. It's called uh, Aurora, Jesudi Aurora, sent to me by David Hall and raised by the late Pete Greenaway. And uh, good depth, and you've got a, a, a small window of opportunity to get the blooms on the bench and that just about is what I showed last Sunday just about acceptable but you've got to hang on to get the weight because if you show it a bit younger you've still got a shallow bloom so it's a small window of opportunity to get it perfect and they were just right on Sunday but look at the bloom there's a plant there Dave there's a plant there I've got three plants of it and um, hell of a lot of flower so that's a good thing about these miniatures and you need a lot of flour to keep the size down through the ring. Let's do this, uh, this Rycroft Blackberry. Uh, Phil Godsmark told me it was a big bloom so I've probably overdone it a bit and grew 22 blooms on a plant which is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> but it's a, a, a lovely formed large pom 
we haven't got many of those but um, it needs to be slightly bigger but you have to be careful with the ring with these large ponds because that will be about the right size that would be about a perfect bloom it goes right back on the stem and I foresee the day when a, a large pond is used in the Terry Clark because they would be so perfect but razors are still in the early stages of uh, sort of getting them like that well, this is my favourite of the miniatures so far this is called uh, Andromeda Jasudi Andromeda again from uh, uh, David Hall sent it to me and I had a lovely bloom early on and this is a lovely bloom and this is a class act this, just get in depth now the centre is green early on but gone now and uh, I think that's got a future it's the colour of a Kiwi Gloria need to grow about 12 up I've got a nice flush of it coming I've had one blue mod so far and I'll never get a vase because I've only got the one plant but um, uh, but it, it's lovely and then we've got another one right next door to it which is called Hercules, Hercules. Um, just Sudi Hercules from Peak Greenaway again and um, need to fight the size to keep it down um, but the favourite my favourite of the three would be the Andromeda uh, but each person would have a different favourite but I'm just worried about some of the centres on these that are a bit sleepy and um, not quite as you would like them then you get a bloom like that it's a perfect centre so you know there's mix and match on it but you've got so many flower on these miniatures that uh, it's, it's great this is one I grew last year called Colston Gold I grew it as a large last year and I wasn't that impressed as a large it was good but where you've got things like Challenger and that it would just slaughter it so I've tried it as a medium it could be a bit chunky but look what I've got on it I've got four five six seven eight I've got it eight up just to see what it would do the same as Colston George which is I didn't mention that but right down the far end the pink one on the fence uh, large semi cactus I've grown it as last year I grew it as a medium semi cactus last year just to see what it would do as a large um, I like this I like this this is um, just gone over the top now it's the, the blue I'm there. looking at your one's just come into it but they they were two totally different colours that's the only thing that will worry you but uh, that was a good bloom that was a really good bloom look how tight it is mm. on on the form so this is called Arm Guard Beacon from David Bates from Solly Hole and uh, it, it's a uh, oh, I'm interested in that I've got another plant up there and I'll be watching it but if you don't match colour better than that you've you, uh, <laughs> got a problem um, this one is Champagne Happy Champagne from uh, uh, Peter Hasselhofer in Austria again and um, no it isn't a patch on John Willett's one I have to say his uh, Normandy Delight is the best film I've got um, this one at the back is Summertime it's Adrian's um, Adrian's Summertime uh, from Halls of Heaven one he raised uh, himself and the second year of it unfortunately it's a beautiful beautiful colour but the form is not what that's the best bloom probably of the lot uh, that one but it's not ideal probably the best colorette I've got would be the Melanie Louise from Brian Madders in the New Forest but uh, this is colorful but uh, wouldn't be a the competition bees daily it, <laughs> bees love it <laughs> On the and uh, so would people in the garden it's, uh, it's a beauty this isn't done as well for me as it has for the razor Eric Booth from Stockton on Tees this is called uh, uh, Spennythorn Georgia May spelled M-E-I May and unfortunately it is not lived up down here to the expectations that I've seen in Eric's garden and what Eric can, uh, can grow he's entered it in the seedling class the Amari Trophy and I was going to try and supply the three blooms for it in the class but at the moment it's looking pretty grim and it could be to do with where you know where you live and how it grows but it just doesn't sort of cut the mustard in this garden centres mm, uh, are, are poor and I'm really disappointed for him because uh, I thought that would, might be the bee's knees this is just going over the top and I'll have to clean them up now we'll take a picture of this one because it's still a half decent bloom it's called Bebs Ada Hill, raised by Tom Babington in the Midlands and it's a spot from John Hill 
and um, never happy with the plants, always worried about the health of the plants, it's on that hard side and I'm sure David Hall who sent it to me will sort, sort the stock out and perhaps I'll grow it another year and um, but the size came this was a really big bloom it's dying now and they're falling into bits but I had it up around the 12 inches and you wouldn't have thought that from a, a plant that wasn't that strong some of them I'm still waiting to come out uh, this is um, Ella Grace this is Westerton Ella Grace which won the Luckhurst Trophy at the National last year for the best uh, uh, small or miniature variety raised by Gordon Hodgson and named after David Hall's wife and um, got potential but I haven't seen the potential yet because they haven't come out but um, they will do and there's one or two all the fields ones are still to come uh, but that ends our little tour and that's what I've been um, up to since I came out of hospital two months ago so not bad for an old pensioner I suppose <laughs> who's half dead um, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much for listening. I haven't bored you to. Hope I haven't bored you to death. Yeah, wake and up thanks now. to David. <laughs> and thanks to Carmen. And thanks to my mother-in-law. No, thank you. <laughs> bye bye.